Well, I know he was going to do a in person and a Zoom hybrid thing or try. Yeah. Morning. 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 We got 13 minutes. Everybody wants to start on the first. We'll see how we take it. Get this one here. Welcome. Mark already got the email to me. You guys are good. Good, good morning. Good morning. Might have to adjust our camera, Jake. I think you got bumped again. We're going to be half in and half out of the video. Nothing to change. Morning, but, oh, yeah. Or he said that he'll make an answer. He usually does that to me. Yeah. They had a bump stuff yesterday because Richard was sat out at first. November. Is that better? Yep, November. All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. Um, I have a couple items on your consent agenda and I'll let Jeff go with the uh, first one. We have a couple of reestablishments. We have reestablishment of Park Place in Wishram. What it is, is we never actually accepted this road formally, this section that runs all the way to our park that's highlighted. I mean, it was granted as part of the develop the establishment of Wishram kind of cloudily and the county never actually established it. We have actually maintained it though and done some work through there. So it came up when um, PUD asked for, what can we put, because we also own a parcel out there too, around the park. And uh, they asked, because they have a lift station there, can we put fencing in the right way? So when we checked it, like well there's a problem well, it sounds like yes <laughs> well, it's not ours we don't care <laughs> exactly <laughs> well okay we don't know who owns it so legitimately we have the rights it's just yeah. we never formally established it so therefore we can't give work within the right way utility right. permits to something that is not within our roadblock so that's what this process does is to put that last section in all right, item number six is a final acceptance for the small works contract between Frank Gurney and Clicktack County, and this is for the guardrail repair project this past winter. Item number seven is a settlement agreement between the county and SDS, and this is for about three acre easement along Panikinik Road. So the end of Panikinik was vacated in the 70s, but we continued to maintain it to the end because there's um, someone that lives back there. So this is to formally um, establish that. And so we have rights. And so, a turnaround. What's that? And a turnaround. Yes. And a well. turnaround. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what we're working toward as well. So item number eight is a request to, for concurrence to award uh, the bid for the Roosevelt Grade Road paving project to Interstate Concrete and Asphalt Company. Item number nine is a request from the county um, for the 2020 non-discrimination uh, accomplishments and goals. And this is uh, another requirement that we have to do annually as part of our um, standard assurances form that, that they require that we submit. So we're working on the uh, um, plan. So we signed a plan before they sent it back and said, ah, we changed the form. So I'm working on that and that'll come in. Actually, we'll finish that this week. Um, and it doesn't have to be signed, but now these standard assurances that you have have to be signed every year. So you'll see it again next year. On the construction side, um, the annual striping contact phase two is on hold until we finish all our chip sealing. And they'll come back in the fall, Old Mountain Road, uh, contractors still roughing in ditches. I think they're hammering out uh, some more hard rock mm -hmm. areas and uh, and then building subgrade. So they'll continue to do that for quite a while. Uh, grant funded edge line project. Um, so first, this is where the equipment burned up first. They got a new piece of equipment, but then getting the materials from Texas to here is nearly impossible because there are no trucks to haul. So they ended up putting uh, the material on a rail car 
and so it's on its way. Um, uh, let's see, nothing new on any of the other projects except for the West Darlin Road paving project. So we've sent our contracts and bonds to the contractor. We'll wait for him to send them back. Um, Courtney Road update. So I brought Seth along. So we finally got word back from Bryce and Seth's going to maybe give you an update on Fred Haney and the PUD's project. So what I heard back from Bryce is that they don't have a complete application at this point. They're still waiting for some plans and locations of where the lines are going to go. And they're hoping to have a complete application in two weeks. He did say that after they have that, then they'll go to the public notice period, which I think is a 20 day notice. But he didn't mention whether it needed to go back through the tribe, which is a separate notice period that I think happens before the public notice. Um, and then he was hoping to start their review process this fall. So I've been back in contact with the PUD and suggests we look at some alternative routes to get that, that line moved in the meantime. So it doesn't affect our project. So. Okay, well, that's not unexpected. It's disappointing, but it's not unexpected <laughs> yeah. as far as the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they have a ways to go yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite a ways. Well, yeah, they haven't even started it. So. Right. Yeah, they basically have even started. Yeah. yeah. You know, but they're hoping to review it sometime this fall. <laughs> it's someone that Enter. speaks daily to Mr. Haney that, of course, is going to be a problem. But yes. Yeah. I, I think there is some things that he can do that are, because I, I have counseled him to really look at the regulations as far as what you have to have reviewed and what you don't. Mm -hmm. There are some functions that, and if you, my experience with the, with the um, scenic area office, if you ask them if something needs to be reviewed, everything needs to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. you, if you, you know, if you want to change the color of the shirt you're wearing, you probably should go through review, but there is some there are definitely activities that are are either small enough that they're categorically exempt from review or they're you know repair or maintenance or other categories that maybe so I've, I've suggested to be uh, an attorney? I don't believe so so but that's his part of it not the PUD's part right. of it as mm -hmm. far as the PUD obviously will have to go through as a as a governmental agency, we're going to have to go through the process. whole yeah. process. Uh, you know how yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, on our other projects, nothing new on the design side, um, other than what's listed here. Uh, maintenance side, East End crew. Um, they're placing the asphalt grindings that we removed from out here on Court Street, out at Estev. And uh, that'll be a, a route, a, a good, better, much better route to our quarry out in Esteb. And, uh, and then they're also grading some roads out east part of the county and uh, helping with the final chip ceiling on the west side this week. So the west end, that's pretty much what they're doing. And then they'll finish this week. So we'll complete all of our chip ceiling by the end of the week, which is good. Yeah, before see. the first of August. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Facility side, the um, work on the building, they're starting to set for forms for curb and gutter on Court Street. They're excavating for one last wall on the backside in the alley. And uh, there's a gutter, the concrete gutter that goes back there and curb to keep the water away from our building. They'll work on that. And then there's a little bit more storm drainage to put in. Um, we uh, ran into last week, they ran into a problem. They excavated to set the last catch basin on the corner at Grant and uh, Court and discovered that there was a hidden line that wasn't identified and a catch basin that the city over at some point in time had buried and just put a steel plate over it and uh, which was in a different location than where we had thought it connected. So um, it's a lot more work. And so what we're gonna do, since we're kind of redoing the whole corner anyway, 
and uh, so we're changing the plan so we don't install stuff we're going to throw away and then we'll fix it when we build our parking lots next spring so right now it'll continue to work as it has for you know who knows how long and uh, we'll fix it when we do the parking lots uh, let's see um, inside the elevator is kind of one of the new things they actually are working it moving it up and down temporarily uh, by generator power so that's all almost all put together and installed how did they put that in the shaft did it come in pieces and assemble or lots of boxes of parts yeah and they just assembled and welded and and uh, put it all together so so that's coming together they're actually putting down flooring the final flooring in uh, our storage room so they're kind of protected pretty much um, and the sheet rockers are kind of finishing up in the stairways and then the touch-up locations that they have to finalize painters are mostly all done um, except for the, all the touch-up that'll happen um, so when uh, as far as the electrical as far as they're still on generator or yeah so when they can get the house closer are they to getting not that it really matters i'm just curious as it, far as because i know so they can get on to the the building supplying its own power right they tried a couple weeks ago to get final but there's more work the electricians are actually the one sub that's a bit behind and then they had a bunch of people that are off this week um and hopefully they'll be back as soon as possible the the low voltage sub is on site they didn't have to leave um so they're continuing to wire which is there's a lot of low voltage cable uh, that needs to be pulled in and terminated so uh, but the power they have a few more things to finish and they've, they've been working saturdays as well okay. so that's the critical path to try and get that the power on okay. uh, let's see courthouse entry yeah we uh, should finish up all the uh, railing on the east entrance be ready to open that up um we're gonna we're also placing stucco on the east entrance they'll come back and paint everything as once because they have a sub that comes in and paints they only want to bring them over from that area once so they'll do that south entry is now open through the jail again they placed the, the sidewalks been and put in and uh, we'll be closing that once we get the the main south entry will close once we get the uh east entry open and uh we're done in the basement or in the vault. We actually have seemed to have just about as much storage as we had, even though we closed off a big section of it because it's it's well organized now. We put in shelving and everything. So everybody has their section, or not everybody, but the people that are in there. And I think there's four groups. <clears throat> Did we have any cracking with that heat? No, we have not had any cracking as of yet. Yeah. Yeah, no. They kept it pretty, they kept an eye on it. They're working really strange shifts just because, so they seem to have people here all the time. Because they have a crew that works during the day and then a crew that works in the evening too. So they missed it and kept it covered. Up at the fairgrounds, we're kind of scrambling to get things ready. There's a few items that we have to take care of, the new PA system for them, and then all the normal normal things that we get set up um, and other last minute things that the fair board has asked for. So we're working on those things up there. Uh, radio update. We're actually um, working with Lauren. I want to go out tomorrow because we have our archaeologists scheduled to go out next Wednesday and do the site survey so we can at least get that going and at that same time then we'll also work through what our agreement's going to be but uh, well, I want to keep moving forward with you I did hear from our archaeologists though there are no known sites in that area so that's good news um, just a heads up on uh, night road. So one of the uh, uh, solar companies uh, biologists is going to go out. They've asked for permission to work within the right of way. So they'll be parking along the road. So 
a call could come in, but that's what's going on. So they do have permits. And they're doing what now? They're uh, uh, wetland biologists, so they're looking for wetlands, identifying them. From the road right away. Uh, in one location then where there's a stream that crosses, so they want to identify it in, within the right of way. And I'm sure other properties as well, but they have to get a permit to be in our right of way. So, and they did. Go ahead. Oh, uh, our guy that runs the firearms training facility for us mm -hmm. has, I don't want to get into the whole thing, uh, the medical thing, but he has a medical, could be a potential medical issue. They don't know for sure. Um, and if it becomes that, they have to do something immediately. Uh, quickly. And basically as a uh, knee replacement. And they think it may be infected. And if it's infected, they can take it out. That's how they fix that. Yeah. And if they do that, then, you know, when he gets the results back, they'll immediately take him in and do it. So what that says is we'll need, we kind of need somebody in the wings just in case. Right. Temporary. Right. Temporary to hire that. to fill that. Um, and we have somebody that's been there helping and everything you know, very, you know, but we have to have approval to do that if we need to. How long do you think it would be for? Probably three months, three or four months. He doesn't seem to think that, and he'll still be attached, but I mean, you're not going to get around very much. I don't know how long. I wouldn't to. imagine this would be a budget hit because if he's not getting paid. For right, money, exactly. It would be the one and the there. same. We wouldn't have two people. We would only have one. So it wouldn't change anything. It would just change basically somebody on there. Yeah, that's all it would do. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Seems fair. Seems reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I would if he ends up having to have the knee redone, yeah, it's three months would be uh reasonable. 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 Yeah. yeah. And I'm not telling my wife that story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. She just had hers done not too long ago. That's a story she doesn't need to hear. No. <laughs> that doesn't mean not three months. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're getting them replaced, that it could be bad. Yeah. That they have to go. Oh, to yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's a bad, that's bad, bad juju if you get an infection in there. I don't know how you would function without the knee. Yeah. Well, they just. I don't know. Not well, I don't want to. I don't want to fight that. <laughs> Moving on. That's right. Uh, does that conclude your? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Questions, comments for the board? No. Okay. No. Uh, there's still some. Um, I'm gonna be hearing some stuff about a new organization on the west end um, dealing with Lakeview Road. Um, and uh, Northwestern Lake Road about speeds and traffic, Martin's traffic study and all that and danger. There's a lot of, there's a lot of traffic on it, a lot of people walking, um, their dogs, and then you got the big buses and now log trucks and everything else. So um, I, I'm sure when she reaches out, I'll get her in contact with you, but I'm guessing it's gonna be the same thing like we did out there in Trout Lake earlier. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, maybe get started with the uh... Speed study. Speed and then study. the other yeah. one that I was um, about was this, there's some complaining online that the lake road got closed off going out to in Trout Lake. And I, that might be just because DL, DNR lands are closed. Yes. And so I, that I'm sign sure that went up for that. But yes. Yeah, you're already hearing a lot of people complaining. So when they plan to close the road for permanent, get ready. Right. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Do we have, I got a couple things. Uh, one is related to the DNR closure of their lands. I do have a, there's a, um, Friday I've got a Zoom meeting with the, the Forest Service is hosting. Uh, it's just so the agencies as, because of extreme fire danger are, um, it is likely all the agencies are gonna follow suit and we are gonna see basically all public lands are gonna be closed uh, recreation in around 
the question was asked well what about county owned stuff but we have like we don't really have any our only recreational properties public lands that we have are our parks yeah i mean we have some public land i mean that we happen to own but we don't manage large you know tracts of land so i don't really see this as uh, other than i'm going to participate just to know what's going on so we can because what if the thing i'm concerned about is if it's almost better if it's all the agencies because if it's you know, DNR has closed theirs, but these folks haven't, then everybody just moves over yeah. and then there's all this confusion about what's open, what's not. And it's very right. reminiscent of the uh, land closures early in the pandemic when they, you know, did that. And it was, it was really confusing to people about what was open and what wasn't. Right. And so um, I'll just, I'll, if, if um, so, I'm not mistaken. We don't really have anything besides our parks, and I, I don't know that we would consider closing those to public. We have some. So the, we purchased property along the Klickitat oh, after yeah. the floods. So oh. their their access to the to the river, river is there, and uh, so then we have Mile One River Mile One, right. which yeah. is for service at the end and the right. access. So that's another one. So that that one we potentially could have some conflict there yeah yes. there's yeah if we if ours is open and theirs is closed but we're you know they're obviously using yeah. ours to yeah. how are they gonna oh you stepped you over know. this rock yeah. or bush right. and now you're on the other yeah okay yeah. yeah that's one the other the county properties that we purchased after the flood of i think 96 they're you know they're just a lot that goes from 142 right. to the river right yeah okay yeah, and those they're not marked. Yeah. No, those could see a few more people if everything else gets closed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, and then if you can, I am still attempting to um, have a conversation about Old Mountain Road. Thank you. Um, so I'm hopeful. I have another route, I'll say, potentially. So describe, how is that going to affect, I, I just want to be really, so that I understand, so I can, I can really advocate for how this is unnecessary. If they go to a level four, it not only affects Old Mountain, our crews essentially okay. are shut down, which means we can't do anything outside of, you know, work in the shop and that kind of right. thing. But Old Mountain stops. Right. And then it just sits basically vacant until they lift, they lift it, it until they lift it yeah. i don't know how watering it periodically would fit in you know I, I that would be something we'd have to discuss but right now when we talk to them every year we talk to them as for what they say there's no waivers you get nothing period you're just done when they're done <coughs> so then essentially it sits there until whenever that gets lifted then the contractor goes back to work right. if it's long enough essentially it could be a winter over project and we know those cost us money right everything costs us money. And this um restriction also affect things like darlin and roosevelt or just we were told we could pave is what we were told we could actually pave so you just couldn't do the improvement stuff and get in the ditches and exactly you can't get outside of the road prison yeah so at old mountain we basically grubbed yeah, right I gave it right away. It's dirt. That's what we're working right, on. Right. That's so there's no well, and plus my argument has been all of the equipment that you would have on site it's are terrifying. the thing are the exact yeah. same things that you would have right if you had an issue as right. far as you know cats and, and water trucks water trucks and all of it's like it is a it really is a it's already it's a fire line it's a fire it's line that's what we're building really. yeah. and we're gonna pave it a little bit like yeah. that but and so you would think those sort of activities could we should be able to get away with i don't think them. they understand i yeah. i just think somebody just rolled us all in because we never used to close down right never until just recently and i don't think and how were we how do we know we have to we've talked to dnr i know did we ask dnr or did dnr no us? dnr years ago and then we used to get waivers okay so we would just get waivers and, and they said okay and this and year they said no, no waivers, waivers. No okay waivers. we we go to them every year at the beginning the contractors would go to them we would tell because we were told 
I can't remember what year it was, but all of a sudden you guys have to follow the same guidelines as the timber industry. It's been like 2012. Yeah, something like okay. that. And then since then we've been doing that. We get waivers every year, but this year, and we always tell the contractors, get your waiver early, don't wait because right. we're not gonna help, you know, we're not gonna give you non-working days if you don't have it. But this year, so, we didn't get it. So again though, who and who up there is saying no waivers? Because that's that's just ridiculous. I can't remember who we contacted. I can get that information, but it's the same people we contact every year. We actually contact Ellensburg to get the waivers. But they said they're being held. Olympias came down and there is no waivers. Right. That's I'm trying to talk to Hillary. Oh, you're going to talk to Hillary about it? Okay. If anybody can wave the wand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think she knows. I don't think she knows. Yeah. I really don't think she understands. Nobody's put it to her. So I'm, I'm having difficulty getting the path to the right to the top. <laughs> because that would mean the state would have very to shut down their protector. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like they'll probably get away access. <laughs> right. Just like we do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Ibby? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Dave. Okay. Yeah, thank you. thank you so much. Okay. Anything else for these? No. And I guess we're done. Go for it. All right. Good work. Okay. Thank you. Radio. Well, hello, Miss Fry. You get Hi. me. Get out. Is it bright in here? I mean, you're used to that dark little hidey hole there. <laughs> we can we can turn the lights right. off if you. Casey. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Brenda, you want to come here? Sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. I can take her up too, Casey. Okay. That's before the crowd. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Before you go on, yes, do we have because we have a we have a oh, visiting yeah. dignitary. We do. A former dignitary. Was there something you needed? I used to be somebody. Yeah, well, <laughs> used to be. Just, just here for a visit. Actually, I got dropped off, and you guys are daycaring. You just don't oh. know. <laughs> Good. Well, and I miss I miss the road department. <laughs> all the fun. They're always so fun. Aren't yeah. They? yeah. Yeah. So right. Well, well. On. Carry on. <laughs> all right. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. So we're so add to our agenda this morning. So we'll start off with a request from the auditor's office, and then we'll go into executive session at the end of our presentation okay. with Public Works to discuss an issue with you. So. Just keep you up to speed on the changes. So the auditors, as you know, has been in the internal, eternal search for um, Chief Ray Unicorn. She's had serious discussions with an applicant that they recently interviewed that has um, almost 20 years of public sector finance director level experience, and as well as uh, four years as a budget manager, three years as a controller at the nonprofit environment. Bachelor's degree in accounting, master's degree in finance, uh, has a CPA. It's the license has last elapsed in another state, and she's in the process of getting that reinstated and transferred to this state. So uh, the auditor would like to uh, be able to extend an offer at the senior accountant two. Remember, we posted three positions: senior accountant one, senior accountant two, or the chief accountant. So it's grade 71, 72, and 74. Uh, since the person doesn't currently possess a CPA license, um, we'd like to offer this person a um, senior accountant two position, range 72, step 10. And then once they are able to get that license reinstated, then they would be eligible for promotion to the senior accountant position, uh, which we put them at uh, range 74, step 7. So the motivations on this person to get that license reinstated um, for them to move to that to the left to the level that they 
easily qualify for. The 72 is a preferred CPA, the senior accountant too, the chief accountant is a required. So uh, puts a little motivation on them to do what they're already in the process right. of doing. She, she says she's been, she realized it lapsed and she's like, yeah, I'll work at it. You know, but she said, you know, that'd be a, the incentive. Truth is we get the benefit of someone with CPA experience and over 20 years of finance director level, whether they have the CPA or not. So they don't choose to move to the higher pay. Um, Where are they coming from? Um, can I a say city, that? a city in another state, within fifty miles or within a hundred miles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the state or the city? No. There's only one state within fifty miles. Well, so. it depends which one you go. Yeah, yeah I guess. I'm trying to figure out how local got me they are. Up. Well, we're trying not to say this. They have roots here. Okay, that's. I think it's the. Yes. I suspect is what close and enough. Probably a couple hundred miles, maybe. That's the draw for coming here is the family roots. Yeah. So we would ask for verbal permission to um, proceed with discussions with this uh, person. Oh, I can't believe it's a unicorn. I think it might be. Okay. That's the going price for a unicorn. And it's within the post that this is actually step seven. We posted it all the way, all the way through. So yeah. this is, uh, and this person is going to take a significant pay cut. So by coming here. So that's the other thing. They knew that when they applied. So they won't be paying income tax for their leaving. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that narrows it down. <laughs> well, I've done all the cover. Every yeah, time yeah. somebody says something, it's just cover that, cover that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do Thank you. you. Need to do. Thank I hope you. it works. I hope it yeah, works. I do too. Thank you. So, okay, I'm out of here. Back up to my Google Sheet. Here. Casey, we'll start off with HR today. Um, you want to just jump in? Yeah. DRS and PEP rates? Yep. So, uh, just to give you a little update so, DRS rates typically come out in July. Um, they did decrease this year for the employer and the employee contributions for. Why? Um, I <laughs> don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is the first time I've seen a decrease in PEP contribution rates in a long time, though. Um, and so the employee, right, the employee contribution rates for PERS 2 decreased from 7.9% to 6.36%. Uh, 6 um, and then the employer contributions also decreased um, with PERS 2 and PERS 3. So, so it could be this. That went down, right? So it could be. So PEB rates for us will come out in typically the end of August. Um, the composite rates for the state agencies did decrease um, for January 1st to July of 2021. And so hopefully that will um, kind of follow suit for us. But we won't know what our rates for 2021 or 2022 will be until the end of August typically is when they come out. So and it could have been that it went down for the state because during the COVID, a lot of folks, and this is true, hospitals in this region did not go to doctors when during the COVID, you know, it was harder to get in. And so a lot of people put off uh, going to doctors and a lot of elective surgeries were put off. So well, they're switching to telehealth too, so that's cheaper than so it could be this year those elective surgeries took place and next year the rates will go. Like that, that's an explanation for me for PEM, but not DRS, right? DRS makes no sense. The only time I've ever seen that was in, I think, 09, and it was the state adjusted those so that they didn't have to make the contributions to balance their budget. Mm. And so, because it's, so, you know, the state is, and all the agencies are big employer. I mean, that's, it was millions and millions of dollars. And so they just sort of, said oh we're just not going to pay that this year or we're going to lower it and that's how they balance and we're just going to shove it off into the future 
Yeah. Well, and I think Jen will have numbers for you. Yeah. And I'm different... Oh, we yeah, we've already been talking. Yeah. It's not a surprise. In, in just the employer contributions for the DRS. Yeah. Right? We'll. So mm -hmm. the budget impact would be a difference of roughly three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Right. With a three percent decrease, and I think it's safe to say your assumption would be accurate, considering everything that has been acquired within the energy plan. Right. Mm -hmm. So the state saying here. Yeah. So here's your year. Just means you'll pay for it next week. Okay. Right. That's that's the only caution when we're doing the budget. This is it's mm -hmm. it's like an airplane in Dallasport. It's not a real. It's right. uh, like don't count on it because that's I think it's a it's an anomaly and so it's a nice anomaly for this year, but mm -hmm. for us, but yeah. And these rates will be effective. Well, we're effective July first, twenty twenty one to. Right. June 30th. So I mean, so in a sense, the savings will get split out across two budget years. So, okay. Yep. yep. So just to give you an update on our student summer interns, um, we did hire six interns that will be. Um, all of them have started working. Um, some of them will uh, finish their internship the middle of August because they will be moving on to college. Um, but yes, we have two in solid waste, one here in Goldendale, one in uh, White Salmon. We have one in emergency management. We have one in public health, one in adult probation, and one in planning. And one of... Oh, that's who that is in planning. <laughs> yes. One of the interns is a return um, from two years ago. I don't know if it was, was bring your kid to work day. Yeah. Or... Nope. Nope. Okay. That is our student okay. summer intern. Okay. And yes. And... Um, I'm not allowed to ask. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so just, just to give you an update on yeah. that. So um, any questions regarding any of that? No? Okay. Um, job postings, we have our usual um, job postings for senior services with van drivers and in-home aides. Um, and then we have our other current postings for um, the clerical position in public health, um, our deputy prosecuting attorney in the PA's office, along with our victim witness coordinator in the PA's office, um, and then the usual summer labor interns, or excuse me, engineers. And so, so in terms of recruitment, um, there is a county in this state that is offering sign-on bonuses um, for hard to recruit positions and along with that comes you know an agreement and, and the, with that with the employee written agreement that you know if they stay so long they they get the other half if they don't they got to pay it back it's um, pretty common in the private sector um, i've asked the pa so he's reviewing it uh, he's going to actually contact that county and, and talk to them but I'm just wondering if, in fact, we can do it pending legal review. Are the commissioners interested in seeing a draft policy um, that would, you know, possibly help us recruit some um, limited high-level positions that were, for instance, in the PA's office trying to, to attract uh, deputies? How would we... Um determine what ones would be eligible when well, we say high level you know in this case i have departments that you know every right. every person is uh, absolute essential to the functioning of the department and there's a process that you've seen this uh, in the draft way we prepared in that county it goes through hr and hr determines uh, whether it's a difficult to recruit you know based on for instance the one friend of these fields have been open by 15 Three. months and we pay problem and we you know kind of exhausted all of our all the things that we can do um, so there would be a process to go through hr and then we would bring it forward to the board that county i think has three three positions they've identified and i think it's three thousand to five thousand is the is the range of the bonus they're putting so it would be limited it would be for certain level positions um, and it would be based on difficulty or um, failure to be able to attract someone so it'd be a fairly high bar that would be set. Okay. And it'd be Do those usually work for middle management and higher level positions? Sign on bonuses? It seems like a fairly low number if you're going to move to the middle of nowhere. They work in the private sector. For $80,000, 3000 isn't going to make a difference one way or the other. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, they're, if their salaries yeah. within three to 5000 it might make the difference. Some, I mean, um, it works in the private sector for certain positions. I, 
not sure how common it is in the public sector, but um, recruitment is difficult now and will be impossible in the next three years um, yeah. based on all the trends coming out because um, certain positions are in high demand across all spectrums, nonprofit. They're not making public workers private. anymore, unfortunately. So. I mean, we did something similar. It did work, but we tried it in law enforcement where we were trying to encourage um, residency in certain right. communities in the county that had, and so we offered a, a bonus um, and nobody took it. Right. But <laughs> what we're just but trying to do it? Uh, apparently, but I don't know if that's because it was bargained in the in the CBA, but yeah, we've. I, I think you know, in the past, we've been told it may be it may be legal, but it's unenforceable. Meaning, if the person comes, takes the money, and then next week says, "Damn, yeah, I'm done," you can't. You know, I'm going to give it back. How are, you, well, how are we? We have no way to. Really yeah, if you're really dealing with fifteen hundred bucks, and yeah, I guess you can. the court, it's going to cost you more than that. And I think the 15, but looking at the agreement that I've asked to pay, well, I don't about that. We it looks have like folks that, that we they're we pay them anyway. <laughs> it looks like I think they're listing right now. So it looks like this county, uh, the PA is reviewing the, the agreement as well. Yeah, uh, gets permission up front to take it out of their last paycheck. So oh, so they can. Oh, oh, that's true. If they sign it, if they agree yeah. in advance. Yeah. So, so you agreed to a, yeah, there's a lot of review yet to go through, but um, we're just looking for innovative ways. I know Commissioner yeah. Anderson's talked about upping the level of uh, LinkedIn that we have to a recruiter level, which is even under four or five thousand to give. We're just looking for tools. Right. I think the salary survey is a tool because I think it'll see where we are in the market uh, with some of these difficult positions but, as well. So, but that's not for a while yet. I, I'm getting, I'm. I just bring you uh, <clears throat> if it passes legal review. I just bring you a draft for your review. That's really okay. what I'm asking. Is uh, you look at it, then we can go from there. So I do have one more question, but I should ask when Brenda was here. Where did we get? Um, I mean, I know we put a lot of feelers out there for that job, and finally got somebody uh, capable. Was it from one of our expenses trying to get them, or did they just find us? I think this person found us on the Oregon Finance Officers Association, of which Brenda posted and Profman posted. So that was one of them free service things, not no, the five thousand pay for it. You pay a couple hundred dollars, I think. Is, is, but uh, um, both Brenda and Profman. But I it think wasn't it, the headhunter. Well, it's hard to tell. Both of them posted, or both of them have access to that. So, I, oh, I see. so um, it'd be hard to say the one she saw who posted it. But um, okay. Okay. Uh, long yep. So, long term care, um, the long term care trust, an email went out to employees uh, last week regarding some of the information. The state uh, has a website that has a lot of information on it, and so I'm directing employees to that if they have more questions. Um, premiums will start being deducted out of employees' paychecks on January 1st, uh, starting January 1st, 2022. The um, funds will be available for people to use starting January 1st, 2025. Um, there are exemptions. Employees can file for an exemption. Applications to file for those will be available October 1st through the state, and employees would be required to get their own personal long-term care policy, and then that would make them exempt from paying premiums. Um, and we are working with the auditor's office on how we're going to decipher who will pay and who will not. Um, and then the state notifies us if they are exempt, and then we do not take those premiums from the employee. Um, there are a lot of questions still regarding people who are retiring within the next five to 10 years because you have to become vested to be able to qualify for this. Um, and so if you're retiring in four years and you contribute to it, technically you're not vested, so you wouldn't be able to access the funds. And the state during their webinar last week, yes, said they're looking into it and they have, they're trying to address some of those questions and issues to see um how how they can move forward with that or in a fair equitable way that yes 
I'm required to pay into a fund I can't actually ever yes. access. So as of right now, <laughs> you either, yes. Well, that's a good example. Yes, so <laughs> as of right now, you either have to you pay to it or you get exempt and then you don't have to pay. Yeah, really. Yes. Yeah, really. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for my chance. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing they're stating too is if you apply for the exemption, you can submit your application. They'll be available October 1st. Uh, they are due by November 1st, so they're going to only give you a month to be able to do that. If you apply later, they will still process your application, but chances are it's going to be a backlog. And so then employees might have to still pay premiums until their application is approved, but then they don't get that money back either. So, so they're out those premiums until their application is approved with the state. And then the state provides them a letter and then they provide us a letter. But yet, this long-term care is still capped at like thirty-eight thousand, right? Thirty-six. Thirty-six five. Yeah. So, so hundred dollars a day. Huh? A hundred dollars a day if you need it for a year, and then that's it. It's it's a it's a lifetime cap of thirty-six thousand five hundred. It's not like per every year or per five years, per ten years. Which, based on recent experience, would buy you one half of one year. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. Yeah. So their push is that if you are needing like in-home care and that is an expense that you can't afford, you're able to afford the other things that this would cover some of those additional costs and stuff. And so, but yes. And that's if you don't move out of state. Correct. So that's the other kicker. You're welcome. If you, <laughs> if you live in Oregon, you still have to pay the premium unless you get an exemption. Um, working in Washington. Um, and then if you retire and need the care and still live in Oregon, you would not qualify for that. Or if um, the care that you're receiving is in Oregon. So, and yes, and they said that obviously those questions have been raised. And so they're looking into that because um, the care that about. would be provided would be all Washington licensed companies. Or a bigger issue like care and ours all go across the river right now. So. Yes. Yeah. So, so those are all questions that they are trying to get answered for. Employers. Although I have, I have less sympathy for that, considering the Oregon income tax is applied to Washington mm -hmm. folks that have no, mm -hmm. I get no services if I, but, mm -hmm. yes. and I'm not looking at, <laughs> at, the, at the Oregon <laughs> residents. <Yeah. laughs> we actually don't know that, so right. we can't ask. <laughs> Same, but we do pick stuff. him up on the <laughs> traffic camps when he comes over the bridge. So. Sales tax is kind of a wash. Yeah, yeah sales tax is kind of a wash. So yeah, okay. so there's a lot of moving yeah. parts with this still, and um, as as we get more answers, I'll, I'll update you guys with okay. with those. Are we getting much pushback? Do the employees know about it, or are we only get seeing a view? Or well, on my email, I put "please read" in caps, and so I um, saw that. Yes, <laughs> did you read it? I did. <laughs> Good. I already knew. Typically, about it. the HR emails well, people don't that. read. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Executive <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, so no, there have been some questions, and they're all questions from people who I am retiring soon. Yeah. Do I have to file for an exemption? I have to go and pay for my own policy, even though this isn't going to apply to me. So, so there are some employees that aren't very excited about it, um, just because they wouldn't benefit from it. So there's there's no exemption that if you plan on retiring within two years before it would even kick in. As of today, no. no. Yeah. You would still have to get your own policy to not have to be required to pay the premium. Because I like expect them to actually think through laws before they create oh, them. I'm not sure that that's not, there was not. Plus, some, like Social Security, they need people to pay into it. Um, yeah, to build, build up a fund balance. Them. Exactly. Yeah. Right. The actuaries. Yeah. Yeah. I, I suspect that was all calculated into the, into the bill. Yep. So. A uh, few more things, salary survey, uh, we did send out the email to all regular employees um, requesting that they complete the JEQ, and so we'll start getting those back and sending those. I will follow up with the electeds. Uh, they're included in the survey, but yeah. do not have to do the JEQ since oh, the elected. I, yeah. Oh, really? I just did it this morning. I wanted to see what it was like going through this thing. I That's almost good. did, but I, I didn't want it to skew the results. <laughs> 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 Okay. 
uh, job classification committee. We did have some uh, people get volunteered to join the committee, and I did confirm with them that they um, that they would join and be a member. And so Heather Joby and Aaron Quinn will be our new job classification committee members. So I will follow up with a resolution updating our list um, for six. They volunteered or got volunteered? Yes. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> no, I reached out to them, told them that they um, were nominated, and then they agreed that's, to that's join how it. Say that nominated by Jay. Yeah, nominated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, I haven't learned to say no yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad. Yeah, a couple new members. And then finally, negotiations. Um, like you said this is a public open public session. Not August first is the date that I'll next this week start working with Eddie on at least lighting up the calendars and I suspect what it'll be since every Tuesday and Thursday um, is budget related through the rest of the year that we'll have to pick a day like Wednesday you know and dedicate that to, to negotiations um, would be Monday Wednesday or Friday Wednesday probably works gets us time to um, if we do it on a Wednesday or Friday then we can report to the commissioners the following Tuesday if we need to so um, so as soon as Eddie night uh, come up with what works for them as well then we'll try and get it on your calendars and we can determine who's participating and what but um, pretty much your falls booked I think so if you would for arrange, Wednesdays. Hmm? well I, that's okay with you guys I mean Wednesdays are better than Friday but then it gives us time before the, and after the session to, to counter offers and to calculate things and bring it to the commissioners if we yeah. need or prepare for the following week. So yeah, I, I like Wednesdays. So we'll be good. Okay. And I'll, I'll reach out to Eddie and see if we can um, come up to some understanding. Uh, so I think that concludes it for HR. Unless yeah. commissioners have any questions. I thought, I thought you were going to schedule us for defensive tactics. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember, just zigzag. Okay, it's it done. Okay, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. It was handled professionally and appropriately. Yes. All right. No that's one good. was harmed in the filmmaking of this movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You well, I heard cry. you're the you're the one. As long so. as you don't cry, we're good. Okay. That's right. That's right. Go cry. I'm not sure who needed the protection. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that Bro. was a good day. Yeah. So Jeff and I would like to talk to you about a couple things. The first one we've brought here a few times on information only, but as we approach now the next supplemental date, I'd like to get further direction. So as you know, the phone, we currently are on um, trunks, and then we have a monthly phone bill. And together it's about $79,000 a year and a lot of work for a lot of employees. We can move to, um, so it's moving away from PRI trunks to um, SIP trunks. And so that would eliminate uh, $6,600 a month in expense and the long distance phone bill and all the work that's associated with that. And the new cost would be, um, $1,300 a month, but to get from here to there, either we start with the new budget year or we, because it's $13,000 upfront expense and then however many months left in this year, because we would shift that entire expense to the IT budget. So we need to have uh, move $19,500 into the IT budget to cover this expense and that savings would be from the department's funds and departments spread over 40 different Mars numbers, right. saving the expense, a couple hundred dollars in some cases, uh, three or four hundred dollars a month in some department cases. So so the county would save the money, but we would need to actually physically put money in the IT budget uh, to make the transition or wait till the first of the year and then budget the 13,000 um, and the new expense for the whole year and then the departments um, would not have that expense. So I hate to keep burning money through the rest of the year just to yeah that I that doesn't make any sense to me if i can save money i because it's let's be honest it's all the same money right whether it's thirteen thousand here or it's 200 here and it's right. that pulled out of all these different well we know where all the money came from 
it all came out of a big pile to begin with. So, so if you're it seems like a no-brainer. Well, and I would just for clarification, if we switch it early, that just means there's unused funds in that BAP budget that come back to us at the end of the year. Anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna so, get it. right as long as they're not spending it. So. Yeah, yeah, like I said, uh, savings would be small amounts in some departments, some departments a little larger in other departments. And uh, I checked with all the grant departments, including public works, and there's no downside to, to doing this uh, from, from a grant perspective or a reporting perspective. Uh, it appears to be an efficiency and money saving. Yeah, because there's some, not just the money, there's some big efficiencies. Yeah, there yeah as for the processing the bill. The monthly phone bill's that thick and right. has to get spread out over 40 or 50 bars numbers and uh, uh, same with the phone. Uh, so it'd be basically moving us to that voice over IP system, right? To a certain extent, yes. Yeah. I mean, we already use a VoIP, but, and also no more uh, long distance codes. So there's that too. Win-win right there. So if you're okay, then we would bring it forward. I've been terrified I'm going to forget mine yeah, right. because it's not written down. It's been the same one. I just automatically, but I'm worried the day's going to come where I'm like, no, no, I is that. I did this <laughs> couple times yeah. and I, it isn't right and I pick up my cell phone. <laughs> so we, uh, it, general consensus, we would bring it forward in a supplemental budget and then be planning to make that transition um, probably in August, September, whatever yeah. lead time we need to. So in essence, by the end of the year, it'll have paid off the thirteen thousand. So we're not we're yeah. not sitting on the new thirteen thousand right bill next. Year. It is the chair. It all goes back into the bucket. Right. So, is there any value since uh, you know, it sounds like we yeah go ahead and do it? And I, maybe it's not. Maybe it's because you said some departments it's not much money, but others you know sometimes it's a remind it, is there any value in a reminder to the departments that you're gonna not you're gonna have a surplus now don't spend it on something that's else. what i was trying i mean to a couple hundred bucks who you know nobody's gonna track that much but some of the larger ones where yeah, it's I, like this we expect you to re like we're now paying the phone bill you're not we want the money we gave you for the, your phone bill Give it back to us. You better send it back to us at the end of the year. Because that works with your children. Because that well, yeah. <laughs> I'm still paying my you're on three year old. That was that was my question. Was, too much from I, if yeah. there's a potential that they can <laughs> rob it out of their phone fund to pay for something else, if that is available, then I want reminders to them to not. If we're paying this now, you're returning that money. Don't, don't go back right. on something and else. The other side of that coin is departments can count this as part of their 3% reduction proposals because for a department that's four or $500 a month, that's five or 6,000 bucks that right. they're not getting current extra that they incurred last year. So they may count it towards the 3% or they may not. Well, that kind of screws us over if they do because it's really not a 3% reduction because it might be a 3% reduction, but it's not saving us any money. Well, the, the money does the cost does go away. The sixty thousand is a is a savings. Yeah, that's true. Oh, across the across the spectrum. So well, yeah, forget I, I said fair. that. We won't put that in the memo. We'll put that in the memo. Uh, well, I mean, if I'm curious what my seatmates at that seat or or Jen, I mean, if you is there any value to that? Is that just going to piss people off? <laughs> <laughs> if we don't let them deduct that, is there? Yeah. yeah, I I think it's you know I think and we kind know. Of implemented and the savings start to happen here. Probably going to be in the budget workshops anyway. So right. Have a conversation then. Yeah. Would be a good suggestion. Okay, those of you listening right now, though, uh, uh, informally, we, we want our money. We want our phone money back <laughs> since we're paying your phone bill. Same thing I tell my kids. But hopefully, it's more effective. <laughs> Only kid now. It, it will be for me. The 27 year old pays his own phone bill now. So. Only recently. <laughs> Only recently. So wait a minute. I got four more years. That's a team. We met with the auditors yesterday to um, go through some recommendations that they had that we're working on the, the, the last big one that we have to. The auditors are auditors or the state auditors. Uh, our auditors, auditors? Our auditors <laughs> sent us over to the other okay. auditors, the state auditors. And one of the, the big deliverables is a disaster recovery plan for what happens if a department um, due to some unforeseen emergency is um, at a business, uh, has to move to another location or if an entire building 
So the IT staff has been working on scenarios about how we get um, internet access and IT access to support the departments that um, have to vacate their premises or we have to vacate an entire building. Uh, that all, if we had one, it would have all changed when we all move into one building. Right. And so the next step is uh, we've created a, they've created a flow chart of scenarios. And now Gordy, we're gonna meet with the public works and facilities folks because it really has to dovetail with what their plans are. You know, can this department move to the fairgrounds? Can that department, you know, what's, what are the scenarios if we lose a department and or entire building, to, you know, to uh, continue to be able to operate? And then the next and the final piece, we'll meet with every department, find out what's, what is critical in terms of uh, IT infrastructure and information so that they can meet the minimum, initially get up and be tiered, phase in approach, what's absolutely essential and required by law that they have to be up and running in 24 hours and then what can be phased in over you know a time frame uh so it's, it's quite an exercise but the state's requiring us to do it so i i think it's a good exercise i i definitely see value in it i question why the state auditor why this is a state auditor well they did an it audit and and they've issued an again I, <laughs> I i renew my question but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, if we, I mean, the downside is if we don't work on it or respond, it becomes a finding in the audit. Right. And, and we're working till I'm not willing to die on that hill as far yeah. as for. And some of it's good. You know, we came to you. Again, there's, these are good things. We should be doing that, I think. It's just uh, scenario planning, and you hope none of it ever happens. And, and um, now that we're all in one building, the two buildings, three buildings, I guess, it, it makes it easier and more difficult. Because if there's a uh, something that impacts a department, it's probably impacted the whole floor of the whole building. Right. Um, so, but uh, the Gordy's expressed a willingness to, to meet with us, and so we can, because uh, I'm sure facilities has has to have scenario planning as well. So, and we've made improvements to the fairgrounds over the last year, or so that makes it a, a real viable yeah, alternative back site up. backup. So, which is good. Anything else you want to? Uh, the uh, what was that the um, um, security review for new devices or software going on the network? Um, IT is is working up a, a procedure to evaluate any new devices or our software because right now um, people can just put whatever they want on the network. Um, so we're trying to evaluate its um, potential risk prior to it going on, and then have a procedure in place to like if I say. Uh, it's too risky, then they can go to Rob and kind of escalate um, through the chain of command to get it put on the network or to get it denied. So, and part of that dovetails with another part of the, um, uh, the state auditor's IT assessment is a risk assessment. We have to have things in place to us. Every time you plug something into the system, you're poking a hole in the balloon and it's, if it can go out, things can come in. And at least one county in the state's been completely shut down. Well, I'm kind of surprised we even allow outside IT to plug anything. Well, almost anything you buy now, and Gordy and I have had this discussion with the new building, almost anything you buy now plugs into the internet, HVAC systems, automatic curtain systems, because everything gets updated. Lighting systems. Lighting right, systems. but they should all have to be going through IT to make right. sure so what we're we, not so what we made in Iran. It's create a separate network and keep things off the critical network so that um, right. if something's hacked, it's not hacked into right. the we're critical right. infrastructure. So they want to hold our shades right. ransom. Yeah. Our blinds will be going up and down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can right. live with that. So a lot, just a lot of time we're like finding <laughs> apartments don't fully comprehend them and, and, and I they don't see the risk because they don't deal with this has to yeah. plug into the internet and right and for software updates and things like that but every one of those is a potential yeah. risk to the county so uh, which is Jeff's job and his team's job to try and mitigate there's risk in everything we do we're trying to mitigate it is yeah what we're trying now no thank you for that that's uh, that's good work there and as far as the um, Next generation of RSA, they're working oh, out. A, they're working out a few bugs, and then you're on, on the test schedule. Yes, yeah. Curtis and Joe are actually working on a few uh, issues that have popped up with it. And once they've resolved that, then we can 
move to the next generation. So move away from the keys. Um, into cell phones, into cell phones. work location based county cell phones, mm -hmm. so they don't have to use the key fob. We should just keep one of them though, just for old time's sake. <laughs> what about employees that don't have company phones? They would They'll still be able to use a uh, uh, yeah, we're just trying to offer other options, yeah. So I think that's it for no, IT. No, I should... no retina scan or blood, blood, blood DNA. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess yeah, for those like... that don't have company phones, is there any way to use their personal phones if they agree? Because I mean, that would be kind of a policy decision. I'm not exactly sure where we stand on that. I mean, because I mean, all you're getting on that phone is a number. It's a text message in essence, right? Right. I, I don't see a uh, security issue with it. Yeah. Right. Um, we've just so, been reluctant in general, and yeah. again, we'll, we have to look into it. I think you make a good point, but uh, people using their personal cell phones, that in itself probably wouldn't be a public record, but uh, people use their personal cell phones for anything work-related, it becomes discoverable, so I'm sure the PA is listening, and, and becomes, um, because it's just got county records on it, text, emails, chats, it's uh, your phone isn't subject to the same discovery that a county's phone is. So. Uh, a lot of people hate carrying two phones, but until you went through 10 hours of depositions, trust me, it's a lot easier. But technology is advancing all the time, and, and hopefully we can get to the point. In Oregon, they solved it by counties pay stipends to employees to use their personal phones for county business, and so it, it's ethically correct, but it still makes their personal phones discoverable. That's not this state, so it's... Um, but then again, like if your personal phone's discoverable and now everything's on the cloud, you just like, here, here's my password. Enjoy. Well, for like a lot of the stuff is on the cloud. So if you were to use your phone for G Suite, that's all captured on the cloud. Yep. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know where the some of us have where that line ends. And um, plugged our phone in and linked it to the cloud in months because we don't get internet access where we live. <laughs> So those are all the things we're, we're looking into. That in itself may not be an issue, but uh, we still have, we have a lot of employees that um, do work on their personal cell phones, and I think that's a risk to the county and to the employee. Um, yeah, so. personal texts and, and phone calls would not be captured by the cloud. So right. Okay. Any questions for IT? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Business services. Hello again. start with the American Rescue Plan, uh, and I'm sure all of you know, but I just want to cover this. In order to receive any federal awards, we have to have a SAM registration, so federal system award registration anyway. Um, it was expiring in August, so in order to continue to receive American Rescue Plan dollars and infrastructure dollars, um, we had to make sure that that was active. I've now been made an administrator to that account, and um, it has been renewed, so we have till 2022. Um, we've received $2.17 million from American Rescue Plan dollars that's parked in Fund 125. The interim report, the first report for that is due within a month. Um, we're supposed to report, it's my understanding that we're supposed to report obligations and expenditures um, and any program data that could be related to lost revenue, that we could be using it for lost revenue. So I went and double checked today. Uh, Treasury portal, what I thought was a glitch because it was only pulling up um, report information for the emergency rental assistance program, which we're not a part of, um, is not a glitch. It's just that Treasury is still developing the reports that need to be filed within the next 30 days. So. <laughs> and the unknown is whether it applies to this batch of money or the first. Um, 
batch of money is, you know, they're negotiating the infrastructure deal in the Senate, and one of the funding mechanisms is clawing back unused COVID funds, whether that be the first funds and that went out or these funds or future funds, but I think it makes it very fluid if um, the Senate reuses some of these funds that are uh, floating right. around the system. So everything's probably in flux to some degree. Um, yeah, and we haven't learned anything from CARES funding, and so I'm going to be the 11th hour, it sounds like, with this one as well. Um, speaking of CARES, the state auditor is focusing on the CARES CRF funds, um, the $1.682 million. So um, since the beginning of July, I think it was back in when I was in Spokane, um, the state auditor has been contacting me and we've been going back and forth. Uh, there was confusion be between the state auditor and the county because Treasury used the same CFDA number for anything CARES related. So it was the Superior Courts, it was Economic Development, it was our 1.682 of the CRF funding. So on the CEFA annual report, all of those were filed, uh, filed under the same section. So she was asking me, where's this $2.12 million? Right. Like, that's, that's not, not that's I, I don't right. understand what you're talking about. <laughs> so we got through that. Um, it took until last week, actually, to get through all of that in the back and forth. Or where she understood and then um and so now she's got all the data she's released some testing information and the auditors are now pulling timesheets and ap batches for her so hopefully it's off my desk for now the good news is you know we anticipated this we've been collectively the county which is why the grant committee or the um, cares committee was created uh, initially and a lot of work done to a cost account and and to you know, track these dollars because you know we all anticipated that there, the state auditor was always saying there would be pretty intense audits. So hopefully we. Um, yeah, she was really focused on how we communicated those funds and what was eligible expenses across the county. Um, so she was very pleased that the answer was we had this working committee of people from various um, departments throughout the county who were um, financially minded. That seemed to appease her. A few times now, uh, the treasurer has come in and talked about Fund 626, the uh, Wind Farm Sales Tax Exemption Fund. Um, you guys have given the verbal approval to change the name of that fund since it has other it's as things other, or yes. categories. It's just an escrow account. So on next week's um, consent agenda, there will be a resolution I've drafted to change that to Renewable en Energy Sales Tax Exemption Fund. And lastly, the but not least. Yeah, the, <laughs> the topic I'm I see you guys twice a week for um, the budget status. So well, the last time we talked, you guys had given the direction of a three percent reduction. Um, we are having some systematic complications. You heard Brenda mutter something about Google Sheets as she walked out. Right. So she's um, so we have. When Brenda's call out letter, she had set a deadline of August 9th. I just spoke with Brenda. We've extended it to the um, August 23rd. I will be sending out the memo I just handed you um, explaining what you guys had provided as far as guidance is the 3% reduction across prior year actual expenditures um, to make sure that these reductions are realistic, they're sustainable. Um, and along with it, extension of the deadline. And that they understand is all funds, all departments, not just the general fund. So, um, also explaining that I've opened up September for workshops instead of just October. Um, and I had the idea, I mean, to bring forward to you guys, if you would like to start opening up August as well, maybe while they're in their building process, if they had any additional questions they wanted to speak to you about, if that would be an option for you guys. This would just be give the individual departments the opportunity to as they're forward, building their- As they're building to speak with you. I do, I would like to caution you though, on August 5th, uh, commissioners, 
Sauter's I'm not leaving that the 12th yeah. is the only one that everybody's here. No. No, aren't you off that next week? He's off the first week, I'm off the second week. I thought you were off. Oh, well. Oh, thank you, sir. Because yeah. you were also gone the 26th. Is that what? You have a retreat. Oh. I wish they would call it a retreat. We'll do our best. We need to call it okay. a, a we'll jailing. Yeah. jailing. <laughs> we, we've had many discussions with commissioners. So I think we'll do our best to answer your questions. Yeah, so I guess you'll handle it. You understand what we're. <laughs> and uh, the statement in here department should be sure to factor in any plan step increases prior to making the 3% calculation. Um, that's, that can be taken two different ways. Like, are you saying I need to factor in the step increase and add it to last year, or do I need to just step, you know, and we've had that conversation. So yeah. mm -hmm. you might want to make that just a little more crystal clear for people or you're going to hear from everyone. Because right. the direction we think we heard was at this point, your employees will get their step increases. Right. Cost of living is different. Get their step increases. So departments that won't be in their actual 2020. So they have to take their actual 2020, add in the cost of providing a step increase to all employees. And then there's 3% from that plus 2020 actuals. Otherwise, they're not counting their phone bill. Not counting their phone bill. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, they'll cut it and then add it to be added right back in step. Yeah, so, I don't like funny math. Right. Thank you. We will try and clarify that language. Any other questions? And we continue to, like this Thursday, we, um, Jen and the treasurer will be reporting in the morning kind of a final report on some of those revenue items. At this point, unless the commissioners uh, want to have discussions in the afternoon, you know, ongoing discussions. Actually, last Thursday was very productive in the afternoon. And we really helped us um, put together the direction. So we'll, we can wait till Thursday and see if, um, if you want to continue in the afternoon. At 11 o'clock, I've uh, made an appointment with the uh, contractor will be in installing the AV in the commissioner's chambers and so uh, Commissioner Anderson and I will be meeting with them of course the, all the commissioners can go over there if they want and they're going to be meeting with the uh, project manager and the general contractor prior to 11 and then we can go over and uh, just meet the project manager from the and of course Lee can go over if, if they want to I think that's all right that would be all right for you to so um, we can do that Thursday, but we'll be breaking 11 to at least go over there and have a quick meeting. With, okay. Uh, so. What day was this? Thursday. Thursday. So we can break a little early for lunch and then come back at one if if we if you want. Are to. we expecting the afternoon to come back? Um, <clears throat> I spoke with Greg this morning before coming in here, and um, it kind of depends on how the discussion. Right. <coughs> we don't anticipate having eight hours worth of talking points, but should you have questions? Depending on yeah. where the conversation goes. But we didn't have any formal agenda for the last half of last Thursday, but there was a lot of really productive discussion that we were able to, to get. So it'll be your call, of course, on Thursday. Okay. Whether we come back and if we do, how long? I have a finance question. It's just not necessarily for you to get wording. Uh, your building over there that when you move out, if we use it for something else, we have to buy out the public works trust fund dollar amount, whatever. Road fund. I road think. fund. Yeah, so the, yeah, the road fund dollars have to stay with the road fund. So yeah, Right. So my thinking is for this budget year, and you guys might have already covered this, I might have be, you know, re redoing it. But anyway, with the landfill funds that go there, can we not use next year's landfill funds in your budget to start doing that buyout process now versus sure, yeah, wait until later? There's lot, lots of options to, to get there. If that's what you want to do, that's an option. So if the building stays, I mean, in county ownership, but can the road fund lease it to and yeah. get Paid. I mean, where they they still the asset is still held by the road fund, but any rent, like if it was rented to an entity or a third party, a third or party us. or to us, is that that's possible, isn't it? Okay. I assume though the road fund would have to have fair market rent return on its asset, likely. Well, I'm make just, the auditor. I'm just thinking if we use some of the right um, landfill funds that were given anyway. 
Right. We can kind of check off a big chunk of it right off the bat. Okay. Any idea what that number is to buy out that building? I don't. I don't have current market value. And did the, did the road fund pay for any of this? No. And so when we talked about this, we have we, the building and how, how we would do something like that. We did talk about, you know, we can be charged rent. To counteract that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's lots right. of different. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. I think, yeah, because we had this discussion. Right. And I knew that part ago. was there. I'm just yeah. thinking if there's a million that we could cut right off the top, um, that would make the term of any buyout a heck of a lot shorter. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like there's multiple options. Yeah. We'll probably do all of them. I just, <laughs> I hadn't heard this one, so I wanted to throw it out there before the budget talk started. Okay. Any other questions for fiscal services? Budget? Yes. Nope. Budget for and then if there's no final questions for for our departments, then um, we'll ask to go in executive session and, and ask that um, Gordy and Jeff stay as part of that discussion. And the purpose is obviously not litigation, must be employment, I hope. <laughs> Lee, you, G. G. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lee. Okay. Well, oh, it's you. it's on my sheet. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. How long do you think you'll need? <clears throat> hmm? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, we will go into executive session in accordance with RCW 42.30.110.1 for an G to review the performance, discipline, or qualifications of a public employee. I'm assuming that's what G is. Right. For five minutes. So like, I all right. Well, there's since we sort of announced we were, we're done until. One o'clock, everybody back in. Oh. But we can tell them we're going to lunch. We'll tell them we're going to lunch. So we will adjourn. We did until not make any action in executive? No, nope. we did not. So we will adjourn uh, for lunch or we will recess for lunch, not adjourn. Uh, we will be back at one o'clock. Thank you. I'll call the meeting to order. Let the record show all three commissioners are present. We'll start with the opening Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Look for the a motion to approve the business agenda. So moved. So with the one add-on. Yeah, one add-on. Yeah, with the one add-on. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve this business agenda with the one add-on under new business. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I think we're gonna defer on the meeting minutes for right now. And that will move us to citizen comment. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the board of commissioners. Uh, there will be a change that we have we have due to the volume of people that have been uh, testifying to allow for uh, more citizens to have access to the board. We are going to limit comments to three minutes now instead of seven. So uh, if you can please do that, and so we will open it up. Uh, for citizen comment, we have folks in. I'll start inside. If there's somebody here that wish to give us your name and what community you're from and address the board. Yes, ma'am. It's better for the, the, mic the, the mic to pick up and the video. And the video. My name is Debbie Wagner. I live here in Goldendale. Um, gentlemen, I just have one question today. It'll be quick. I would like to see ordinances so we're safe when these companies come in. We have just heard of a meeting on August 3rd. Cypress Creek is coming to town. I'm upset as you can tell. We need your help. We need your power. Please give us ordinances. That's all we want. 
We want our citizens to be safe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. <laughs> One other thing I'd like to say, and I'm done, is Douglas County just put all their ordinances through. Talk with their citizens. Two weeks, gentlemen, that's all it took. Two weeks. Not two years, but two weeks. Please help us. That's all I'm asking. Thank you for Please do think about what I said. Thank you. Okay, we are in citizen comment. I will go, we'll, we'll take turns back and forth. If there is somebody on Gabrielle Zoom, uh, Gabrielle Gilbert, go ahead. Hi, thank you for your time. So um, I have two points. They brought it up the last um, citizen's comment. I would like for the commissioners to address the need for daycare in Klickitak County and that that lack of address has been building over the years. Um, and we have less and less resources for families um, concerning daycare. If you want a vibrant uh, economic conditions in the county, you really do have to address the need for affordable, safe daycare. And, um, and the lack of it is a detriment to the, that economic growth. And it is time that those in positions of elected power and those that are in positions of um, businesses and community power need to get in a round table and get some sorts of daycare solutions um, put on the table to address. And then finally, um, I am going to say that the voices of opposition against what the sheriff is doing with this proclamation, we are not going away. And those that have a um, idea that we're just going to move on, that is not happening. We will continue to address and critique this until it is finally addressed in a way that the community can feel safe, the people that work in the county can feel safe, and elected officials can feel safe. And it is um, our job to critique um, and keep that pressure on until that is addressed in a way that everyone feels that um, they are safe in their, their community. And the lack of trust that some community members have with the sheriff department is real. And it is up to the sheriff's department to start addressing the lack of trust that community members have concerning um, the sheriff's department and how it is led under Sheriff Songer. So thank you for your time. Um, I hope it gets back to seven minutes. I think it's important that voices in the community are, are never limited. So thank you for your time and I appreciate it. Ms. Gilbert, did you wish yeah. to respond? Ms. Gilbert, this is Commissioner Christopher. I just wanted to let you know that there is a Clinton County Child Care Committee that has been working on this for a good year and a half or so. Um, through um, Leslie over at WAGAP, they just finished a study. I am also on that committee. So uh, I would encourage you to reach out to WAGAP and get their um, study that they just finished about two weeks ago. They're also going to be applying for another grant in the next uh, year's grant cycle to continue that work. So it is um, it is being worked on. We know it's an issue, uh, and we're going to do what we can. So. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's really important because it's an issue that's kind of been sidestepped for a long time. Um, and I think it is great that there are finally committees. I just hope that things get moved out of committee and actually become actionable things that people in the community can see. I think that's really important as well. But I appreciate that the beginnings have started. I just don't want to get stuck in committees or where good ideas go to die, <laughs> is what I want to say and as I well. And I agree with that. It's just right um, now everybody's looking for funding. So, well, uh, and that may I also location is there it just needs funding. So, and may I quickly add, we are a desert when it comes to grant funding. I feel that that is something elected officials need to step up their game to state officials. Um, that you guys all, as elected officials, local and state, are addressing the funding desert that is grant fund. You know that, that we are a desert when it comes to grant funding, Ms. and Gilbert. I feel that that's something you Ms. guys Gilbert, need to do. I'm sorry, your time, your time's elapsed. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are in <clears throat> citizen comment. I go back to the room. Is there anybody in the room? Yes, ma'am. We can have your name and your community for the record. That would be helpful. 
My name is Sherry Bosquet. I live in Houston. You've spoke to me many times on citizen comments over the Zoom meetings. And I'm here today in person to put my person in front of you, my citizenship in front of you gentlemen who have a lot of power in our county when it comes to especially development oversight and what you allow to happen in our county and what you gentlemen oversee. And I'm here to talk about the under canvas conditional use permit. As you know, your county, because our, our county, Click Attack County, is against the citizens right now. We are in an appeal for the CEPA, and it is Click Attack County and under canvas against me, your citizen who pays taxpayer dollars. My taxpayer dollars right now is paying for you, Click Attack County to continue to push forward, to push this conditional use permit down our throats in Houston. As you can tell, I'm very angry. You will destroy lives, destroy lives with this. And you are using our resources. You, how many thousands of dollars are you into under campus? Because we're going into this, this hearing examiner and I don't understand how you gentlemen thought you could push this forward to a hearings examiner without going through our board of adjustment. But I guess you'll make us figure that out, fighting you again, Click Attack County in court to figure that out instead of doing the right thing. You know, they will raise our fire risk out there. We are at extreme right now. Under Canvas has told you they will raise our fire risk. They have not provided an evacuation plan. They have not gotten more water rights. Mr. Sauter, you said if they could not get under water rights, they could not get a conditional use permit. So why is this hearing happening? It should be a done deal right there. But still, you push it on us. And for not having code compliance right now, no laws, no laws for us citizens for code compliance is very disturbing. You gentlemen should be working on that for our protection. Nobody in this county has protection. And I am asking you to one, stop this wrecking ball of under canvas. You have the power to pull it back now. Stop pushing this on the citizens and stop wasting our money trying to force this on us when we have proven with experts, this will hurt us. It will hurt many people. They cannot evacuate. I'm asking you to stop issuing cups until you have code compliance. I would like you to click attack county to stop issuing any building permits until you get code compliance laws back on our books. It is not right to operate in this way as a county. And you're gonna force solar panels and destroy acres and acres of grounds using a cup, Mr. Anderson, which you asked us to trust. And I don't trust it. Please stop abusing us citizens. Thank you, Ms. Bosque. Okay. Response. Okay, we are still in citizen comment. Is there somebody we'll go to the we'll go to the Zoom folks? Is there anybody online that wishes to or star six if you're on your phone? Star six if you're on phone. I see zero six two or six two seven four has unmuted. Did you wish to speak? Yes, sir. I was calling. My name is Benjamin L. I was just calling in regards to transportation needs. I was wondering if you folks could end up getting a bus stop in Clickitat. There is a shortage of transportation down there, and that's all I wanted from Mount Adams Transportation. You guys are doing an excellent job, and I greatly appreciate what you guys do. And that is all. And so, yes. And I hope you guys have a great day. I won't take any more of your time. Please consider it. And I would greatly appreciate it. And so would the community. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. We don't have bus even in Lyle, do we? No. That's part of that. You there is the that needs in the gap. Okay, we are still in citizen comment. I will go to the room again. Is there anybody in the room that wishes to give citizen comment? Okay, come forward, sir. Greg Wagner, Goldendale with the group Cease. When wind power came here, you guys recognized the need for ordinances and control over wind power. Now solar's here. We had a moratorium. We gave you all the information you needed to digest and understand the dangers and hazards of solar. You rescinded our moratorium without any findings of facts. You want the project to move forward. 
You had an ordinances for wind. We need ordinance for solar. We're not asking for too much. You have ordinances for all kinds of things in this county. Why can't we have ordinances for solar? Batteries are a danger. We've proven it to you. June 29th, Morris, Illinois. A recent fire from lithium ion batteries, explosions, evacuate the citizens. 28 tons of cement to put the fire out. You're on the fire. We can't fight it with water. We can't fight it with, with foam. Do we have 28 tons of cement sitting around somewhere ready to put on a fire? The two acres of, of lithium ion batteries out by the substation? We don't have it. Tony Browning says he's not prepared to fight the fires. Why are we allowing this to move forward? We got this conditional use that Mr. Anderson says, trust the process, keep it local. We don't even know what the CUP is. We can look at the EOZ and read it. We don't see anything as far as CUP. How can you trust something you can't see? We've been down this road. You said you were fair and honest. You can't be fair if you take and say, I'm in favor of wind and solar and rescind our moratorium and just move on. Since that time, you haven't had one discussion, at least to the public, not a workshop yet to discuss your so-called guidelines, which your prosecuting attorney told you they can't be enforced. He told you we need ordinances, we need laws. That's why you have them for wind. Why don't we have them for solar? Why are you ignoring this? My life and many other people's lives are gonna be destroyed. Yours has a potential to be destroyed, Mr. Christopher. You live in a protected area and I don't know, you must be somewhere out in the, where you don't have to worry about it because you're glad to let it come here. It's gonna destroy a lot of people's lives. Those are the people you are paid to represent, not to ignore. Why can't you have open public forums and talk to the citizens? You said you, during a moratorium that you resided over many contentious meetings. Nobody acted bad during the solar moratorium. You think negative of the people rather than giving them a chance. We want to have open public, public town hall meetings with you guys. You should be willing to talk to the people you represent. Not just let us make our comment and say, thank you, Mr. Wagner. You know, and the personal attack, when I asked you, Mr. Sauter, you said on this date, I was on the committee for the EOZ. You're right, Mr. Wagner. We don't have anything about solar. We never thought it'd get here. And then in May, you say the EOZ has everything we need. And I ask you, which statement is true? That's not a personal attack. That's asking you to clarify two statements. You're out of time, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. We are still in citizen comment. I will go to the, or I guess I'd look to if, if anybody had anything they wanted to respond. No. Okay. I will go uh, online if there's a citizen that wishes to address the board. Raise your hand, get my attention, get our attention, unmute yourself, star six. Not seeing any of them. seeing anybody we have a lot of screens open so, so there's a lot of people and a lot of new phone numbers so i will say again for all you people that called in on your phone star six to unmute if you want to talk to us okay not seeing that i will open it up in the room if there's anybody else who wishes to make citizen comment no Okay, well, that is available when somebody wishes to. Are you still limiting to three minutes? Yes. Was that voted on? No, it was noticed. Three minutes has always been, a, I mean, citizen comment, the length of time for citizen comment has always been at the discretion of the board. Um, it is, we did have discussions on Thursday when we made that decision. We had checked around the state to see is there in the, the vast majority of not just counties, but hospitals, school districts, it's three minutes. Uh, our seven minutes was, to my knowledge, was the only one in the state of Washington. The idea is I don't want to limit citizens opportunity, but we have we have seen now we're not today 
um, that we have, but as, as we were aware last week, where we had to have a second citizen comment because we ran out of time for people to have access to the board. Did anybody comment on that second? Yes, we had several people came back and commented on the on the second one. So, so I believe didn't didn't you comment on the second one? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I don't don't have my notes with me. I was trying to remember who did yeah, who it was. But we did we did have the and second I, round. I would say that I've had people. Um, in the general public as I'm just walking around town have called in to comment, but they don't feel like they have adequate time uh, because it's, I'm not offending here, but the same people over and over again and their concerns don't, in their words, they don't feel their concerns are as big of concerns as your concerns. So they don't mention their concerns and then they don't have access because they feel like, like their concerns are petty you know, a dark barking dog or something like that. They don't want to make a comment because they're going to be shut down because you guys have big concerns and theirs are little. I know it's weird and that's what I've tried to tell them. So that's why we're kind of doing the three minutes to see if any of them will step forward and actually- But I hope comment. they do because I, every concern is relevant. That's exactly what I yeah. Yeah. So we're hoping in this new format, some of those people will step forward and make comments. And I'm hoping that by citizens showing up and making comments to you gentlemen, it inspires other citizens to use their voices as well, that we can have hopeful conversations. And I know I'm upset, but I think I hold myself together knowing what the train wreck that's coming down our Houston right. That's just another reason why you should have monthly town hall meetings to give all those other people the opportunity. They can call in, you can put ahead of us, that's that's fine. But let's have town hall meetings where, where you guys make yourself accessible to the public, to all the public, not just three little minutes. Some issues are much bigger than three minutes. A barking dog, the guy talked for more than three minutes. Okay, we're still in citizen comment. So I will give an opportunity for folks on the Zoom or phone, if you have a, any topic that you wish to raise, if it's if it's important to you, it's important to us. So Russ, unmute yourself. Russ is unmuted. Uh, Russ is unmuted. Go ahead, sir. Or ma'am. Hey, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, this is Russ Hansen, Goldendale. Okay. Uh, I just like to make a comment. My wife and I took a trip out to the Lund Hill Solar Project last week. Yeah, no one's been out there. I'd really encourage you to go out there. If the commissioners haven't been out there recently, you really need to go out and see it. It was absolutely jaw-dropping. I mean, it's sick to our stomach to see not necessarily what's going on there. I'm not saying that's a bad sighting for it, but to think that that's going to be coming to the Night Road Hill area around all these houses. Uh, just their logistics area alone, where they have their materials and parking and Mobile buildings probably took up 60 acres. The amount of heavy truck traffic, the dust uh, was unbelievable. Uh, so I just really encourage you guys to go out and take a look at it and just imagine that coming to this area out here at Night Road. Uh, it's, it's disturbing. Anyway, thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Dave B. Um, Dave B, go ahead. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Dave Barta Goldendale. I, uh, you might have noticed we have a little bit of a water quantity issue in the area, uh, meaning there isn't enough. The south fork of Lockhouse Creek is dry for the second year in a row at Fish Hatchery and Hill Road, which is the only time I know of that I've heard of in history, and it was two years in a row. The spring is still running, although no one is irrigating from the creek. The water only goes about a quarter mile before it's consumed by reed canary grass and cattails and other things, I guess. Uh, have the county commissioners considered taking guidance on or given any guidance to planning and building departments about the continuation of drilling new wells almost unstopped? Um, I guess I would say in my conversation with other agencies at the state level yesterday, I, rec I think I have a very, a very small bit of knowledge about what constitutes uh, the state's re responsibility to restrict well drilling. But 
were, in my opinion, I mean, I've, I've only lived here for 35 or 36 years. We're headed for a problem really quick. If we have one more year like the one we're having now, um, I guess if, I suppose if a guy doesn't like citizen comment when people do have water, they really won't like it when they don't have water. And I think that's gonna start happening. So with that, I just would appreciate any input that you can give to the planning and building departments about the continuation of wells of all kinds that are being drilled and the effect they're gonna have on groundwater for everyone who's already here. Thank you for your time. Response. Um, I'll give a response at the end if we have the, the time. Yeah, if we have time. Okay. Uh, we are still in citizen comment. I'll go back to the room if there's any people that haven't spoken yet. No. Okay. I will go back to the Zoom if there is someone that wishes to make public comment. This is your opportunity. Unmute yourself, raise your hand, get our attention. Not seeing anybody right now. If you wanted to comment, <clears throat> Dave, this is Commissioner Anderson. With regards to the wells and the availability and the aquifers, uh, yes, we are seeing uh, wells this spring. So even in the spring, after the winter rains, wells were uh, the water levels were down. They did not uh, return from last year like they usually do in the winter. That's easily seen in the amount of precipitation we have. Um, everybody is in this together. Um, wells that are in the shallow alluvium aquifer need to be the most cognizant of how much water they are using. Um, it behooves each and every one of you uh, who's on well water uh, to, uh, to conserve all that you can. Don't think about keeping your grass green this year. I know it's a fire buffer. But when it comes down to the potability of water, you have to make that decision for you and your family, as does your neighbors. Uh, the high prairie area is one area that is highly efficient. They're very prone to wildfires, but nobody has green grass up there. Um, you're seeing that more throughout the county, even the west side of the county. It's a very dry year. Um, in terms of my history, the only dry year I know that's, that's rivaled this one in recent memory, it was 2005, dry and hot years. Um, and yes, the, you're, you're also correct that it's been two years in a row. Last year was not a, a great year either. Um, so everybody has to work together. The other last thing I can say is, is that the actual amount of water that's withdrawn from the wells, most of the water that you ever pump, so long as it's not going on irrigation of grass, goes right back into that same aquifer. The consumptive use from a well in a house is very, very minimal. It's when you start irrigating your lawn that that consumptive use goes up and that changes the uh, changes what can happen in those streams for the most part. Okay. And then um, do we have any others? Before I, before we didn't you answer on? on that one though. Yeah. Okay, we are still in citizen comment. We'll give an opportunity if there's anybody else. I do see AK is unmuted. I don't know if that was a uh, attempt to speak to the board or not. I just don't think they have anything going on. Okay. Okay. I got another one if you want. Go ahead. Okay, in response to Sherry, um, the county is not fighting you. Uh, you have rights as a citizen, just as every other citizen has rights, just as a business has rights. And the rights to go through and use the due process of law is important for both you as well as the other side. You have a right to oppose something and somebody else always has a right to propose a project. The county's job is not to take sides. The county's job is to process the application. Sometimes somebody has to take sides and if it was a regular SEPA appeal, then it would be the three of us who would make that decision. That's our quasi-judicial powers. But you sent it outside the county. You did not keep our cup process local. Okay. So now, when you say it's local, I'm let him, let him speak. you have to understand Clickitat County is actually a very rare county. Most counties in the state, the Board of County Commissioners don't get involved at all. Everything is done through a hearing examiner. 
that exact same thing that you uh, uh, brought up, uh, Debbie, about Douglas County, if you, if you read it, it goes through a hearings examiner. So when you look at these things, hearings examiners are normal. They are actually the general procedure in the state if you look at other counties. Click at that county. Uh, we believe that it, we need to be the ones in the hot seat. We don't hire um, hearings examiners for the most part. Quick question then. Why is it let, let, let him make his comment. This is he's, he's responding. You've already had your three minutes, ma'am. He's he is, just he is talking rhetoric. It's rhetoric. Sh Sherry, Miss Bosque, please. You're please please let us follow the rules. The rules are clear. Three minutes of citizen comment. If a commissioner wishes to to respond, they can or not. Well, it's insulting. It's, well, it's uh, insulting, ma'am. It's insulting to me that you are not abiding by the chairs. I am rule. being lied to. I am being lied to, ma'am. You wonder. You wonder why? Why do your interactions always end up this way? Because you lie to us, and it's no. upsetting. No. Your prosecuting attorney is a gift. Ma'am, you're out of, you are out of order if you can't follow the rules. Please restrain yourself. Do you wish to continue? Sure. I kind of lost my, my momentum yeah. there. But let me let me see what else I got here. Um, with regards to a SEPA process. Um, you have not completed and been through a SEPA process. Um, there is a process in place. I would say this for the same for the under canvas as well as for what we are going through with regards to the solar projects. Okay, and especially on Night Road, there's a SEPA process for a reason. Um, you can see from all of what is happening with the under canvas process where both sides have lawyered up. There are lawyers on both sides that are fighting over this. And it is going from through a hearings examiner in this instance. And a hearings examiner is a lawyer who understands the law, land use law, much better than the three commissioners do. That's one of the reasons that these other counties have went through the process of using hearings examiners who have been through law school. And there's a reason for that. The reason that in January that I pushed forward on a SEPA process for the night road area was so that it would have public comment, it would have public involvement, everybody would get to have their say, and everybody could comment and be involved. And that's why I push for it, because I do care about the community. I care about your rights as a citizen to comment. I care about your rights as a citizen to appeal. And I care about the rights of all citizens in this county to be represented. And that's what's important to me. And I understand that it's frustrating. I understand it's very frustrating. We've all been through it. If you've lived here a long time, you can see the changes that have occurred in this county. Every one of your houses that every one of us lives in is, was at one point, some point, either rangeland or something else that was being used by somebody else. And they probably weren't happy when you built your house. Changes do happen in this area. But the important thing is, is that we have a public process we show respect throughout the process and we work together. Not everybody's going to be happy with every decision. Some of them, nobody's going to be happy. Well, if you ask Dave, it's probably most of them. No, not everybody happy. And that's usually what happens when we actually come to the end of the story. When compromise is in fact found in politics, usually no one's happy. Now, I ought to say that from now on, as a commissioner, if somebody shows disrespect and speaks disrespectfully and has to get gaveled down, I will not respond because I do not believe in negative reinforcement. As long as you can show respect, as long as you, and I have no problem talking with anybody. I talk with everybody all the time. I have, I will say, Mr. Wagner, though, that when you, when you say you want to hold a public hearing or you want to do a town hall and you're asking us our opinions, how we feel about something. As soon as you do that, and then if a commissioner says, well, yeah, we've always, we have a long range plan. We've always been in support of renewable energy. It's built into uh, our planning documents over 20 years. 
once you say that, or once he says that, and then you're going to come back over the top and say, you can't be fair. That would be, in essence, be saying anything we have in terms of us responding to anything, any answer we give, we will then create the potential visual in your mind of a conflict of interest because we've given you an opinion, whether it's we're in favor of energy development or we're in favor of economic development. You, that will be then used against us. You have to realize that we are people too. We are doing the best we can. This isn't a great job, but we're trying our, our darndest to listen, to respond, to answer all your public records requests and to be involved. But just realize we're gonna have a, pub, uh, a community hearing up in Glenwood on the track D information. I would have no problem having more town halls. As you can see, I don't mind talking. But what it comes down to is you have to show respect. You have to be respectful or you're not going to get any sort of reciprocity from who you're speaking to. And I hope everybody in here understands that as well as those that are on the phone. You'll always see that when people are very respectful, when they speak to us, we're far more apt to respond. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. We are out of citizen comment, although I would give an opportunity to <coughs> any other comments. No, we're already four minutes over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're actually out. Okay. That's okay. I'll wait till I'm I'm, I'm, I don't like to use the gavel. I, I can tell you I've, I've used this gavel four times in 15 years. Why are they Twice of which were in, in the last couple of months. <laughs> On me. <laughs> um, and I... I'm standing up for the citizens. I'm standing up for the citizens. Thank you. And I hope other citizens stand up for themselves too. Okay, we are out of citizen comment. Um, Ma'am, if you want, if we have a little break, if I can talk to you personally if you want, if that's, if you had something you want to raise. No, I just have one question only. No big deal. Thank you. All right. Can we squeeze her in a little bit later? A little yeah. citizen comment. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we are now um, consent. consent. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the consent agenda with all nine items. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, payments. Pay bills. Do you want to pay the bill? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the accounts payable warrants in the amount of $227,677.66 and the payroll benefit warrants in the amount of $1,062,911.20 for the date ending July 26, 2021. You take it back and not want to pay those bills? <laughs> can they scratch our mill off of that? Because they come up with taking it out. I have a motion a second to pay the bills. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Which brings us to the add on under new business. This is approval of memorandum of understanding between Click That County and Click Attack Valley Health. Uh, under the proposed MOU, the county will provide up to $35,000, I inserted the up to $35,000 in community development funds to reimburse KVH's costs associated with coordinating and sponsoring a regional economic development summit for the greater Goldendale area. This community development funding request was discussed with the Clickadat County Public Economic Development Authority board members. The individual board members were supportive in providing KVH the funding for the regional economic development summit. Do you have anything, Mr. McClure? Okay, yeah. to add. Okay, discussion. I would just like to thank you both for doing it. And the whole EDA board for that matter. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. Like, Giving it a try. <laughs> you want to make a motion? Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, approve the memorandum of understanding between Clickstack County and Clickstack Valley Health. Under the proposed MOU, the county will provide up to $35,000 in community development funds to reimburse KVH's costs associated with coordinating and sponsoring a regional economic development summit for the greater Goldendale area. This community economic development funding request 
was discussed with the KVA, uh, the board of the K KCPDA board members. The individual board members were supportive of providing this KVH with the funding for the Regional Economic Development Summit. Second, Mark. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the MOU between the county and KVH. Any further discussion? No, the time only my discussion. I'm, I'm very supportive of this as far as I, I hope it's successful. I hope um, it would be really good to have some focus here. Could in be huge, I hope it is. Yeah, so but I think we got to put our money where our mouth is sometimes. And so I'm willing to support the investment. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. MOU is approved. And I'm going to use my chair's prerogative now. I will have uh, a little mini public comment period, ma'am, since we were out of our scheduled time. If you can give us your name. Yes, ma'am. I just have one question. Yeah. Can, can, can I have your name for the record? You come up so folks can see you too. You get to be on camera along with the rest of us. All thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> your name and what community? My name is Debbie Culver, and I'm from Goldendale. Okay. And I have one question, and it was handed to me as I was leaving home, so I, that's why I forgot it. Okay. When are you going to reopen the jail ministry? Question mark. The oh, okay. So um, now. I was actually unaware that it it wasn't. It, I assume it, it has not restarted since COVID. No. Okay. That is likely. I'm going out on a limb yeah, here. It's likely. It's probably the, the hall to the sheriff that. would be the one that actually. So the person who talked to me said they talked to Carmen, and Carmen's under you. If no. I have all the names right. No, Carmen's under Bob. under Sheriff Songer. Okay. Well, so it would, be the, share, it would, would be the sheriff. It would be the sheriff. They want to start it. It's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> I assume they had. I finally it got brave enough to ask you a question. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, hopefully, it's the first of many to come. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that brings us to prosecuting attorneys' time. Uh, Mr. Cannell, if um, you're, I, I think I saw you on the line earlier. Or no, I don't have anything today, gentlemen. All right. I saw you in the building, so I know you're here. Any questions for the prosecutor? No. Did we did we end up getting the Glenwood thing on our schedules? Is it on our app? It should uh, yeah. be yeah. for the 17th, August 17th, August 17th. at 6 6 30. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, board pending updates from the previous week. Thursday, so. I'd say we we've been meeting so much we don't. Yeah, we're we're, so we're anything yeah, happened on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> um, let me look at my notes just to make sure. No, I got nothing since Thursday, so okay. Nothing yet. Anything that you wanted to add? Then it was the weekend. You know, I had a lot of meetings. I'm just trying to think what what I just think of to my calendar. There's a look at the calendar, and then I have a notepad that's just board pending that I make little notes on. No, I'm good today. Okay, um, I did have um, as I mentioned this morning. The I do have the Friday. I think it's eight thirty, eight o'clock is the the interagencies are we're going to be discussing as far as the closure of public lands uh following suit because uh dnr has already done that as we had said i expect if they haven't yet they soon will forest service because of the extreme fire danger will be closing recreational lands and so this will be a kind of a coordination discussion about uh, because some counties in the region or public, you know, cities and stuff have public lands that they use. And so it's going to be a question of the river, how's that all going to work? And then if they don't close and we're open or vice versa, what's that going to do? So it's just kind of a coordination meeting. So I've got that on Friday. I did have um, ADSWA meeting, the board, which meets, I think, every two months. That's the area agency. Um, I don't know if Sharon was on. Uh, they did. Um, so that's where the funding for senior services comes through that agency. Um, 
that continues. I think I had uh, I had um, commented a couple meetings ago how they had had a pretty significant um, fund balance increase in the in the agency over the last. And you know I had advocated, and not by myself. Everybody else agreed too that the they should be. You know those are our, um, you know, providing services and that rather than build coffers in the organization, the money should go out the door to the like Quickadat County Senior Services to provide more services. And so, and they are, um, so we are doing that. Uh, we should have the, the um, amendments should, if they haven't already come out. So it will add some extra dollars that we're getting for uh, congregate meals, senior transportation. So they will be upping those uh, to try to balance out. Is it a is it a one time up to clear their funds or is it no? It's to it's it's uh it's to try to get it to a sustainable Perfect. where it's not. But even with that with that built into it, there's still the fund balance is still growing even with the additional uh, projected outlays. And so that's something um, I think we're gonna. I'm going to continue to watch and advocate for because again i think it's reasonable you need to have a adequate um fund balance for cash flow and right. you know and all that but whatever that limit is anything over and above that you should try to balance your you know so that you're stable that you're not growing fund balance or decreasing right. fund balance right. that's bad too but you want to try to keep it somewhere in there and every other dollar should be going out for program services so that it's provided and, I, and it's it's a good board I, there's um so it's us skamania clark cowlitz and wakayakum are the five in the in that group is the governance board and so uh everybody universally agrees with that approach so have you done any in person there or the old thing no it's still it's still i could have went in person was the first meeting but you still had to be masked up and so I would rather be unmasked in Zoom. Kind of nice. People can Zoom and don't yeah. have to you don't have to go because it's all down to it's, yeah. it's it's a Vancouver. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind actually meeting somebody in person once. Sometimes, but then after I, that, it's nice to save the two hours. Yeah, the two hours to get you there. So that was that was what I had on Friday. So for Friday, uh, is this uh, statewide, like, or is this a? More it's the regional it's area? the regional. Um, it is. Uh, Lynn from or now former retired from the Forest Service is um, facilitating it. It's the same same uh, footprint as the rec ones were that were earlier that I participated in because it's a very similar when it was COVID shut down what impacts that was going to have on recreational ends and now it's extreme fire so it's kind of the same thing so it's the five counties actually six it includes Multnomah and they actually do participate yeah yeah they've had the uh, not the sheriff but some like under sheriff or a high ranking uh, law enforcement because they've had because um, they do the uh, law enforcement they, they have interactions at like Multnomah Falls at the right. parking lot so they were talking about the difficulties of of managing that the circumstance and then all the the because the old the scenic highway was closed and they may be I don't know if that's one of those questions I've got does that mean are they going to close the scenic highway or are they I don't know why they would but um, and then what that's when that's going to be so that's on Friday anyway I'll I'll update next week are you there's a uh, McKed said to meeting vision and goals yes tomorrow are you doing that one apparently <laughs> as I threw it on my calendar I was like oh, well you, no you, you're yeah, on the team I was uh, I was so I just wanted to I was something. reminded yeah. yesterday yeah. and I was that's yeah. what I wanted yeah. I want to talk to Richard Foster I would be listening in on uh, that, so. to as far as our I think it's our turn to present our sets and our priorities and I need to know what those are exactly <laughs> tomorrow so. <laughs> okay uh, a lot of 20 minutes which I'm happy to give 19 of to you if you will <laughs> <laughs> go for it um Wasak County Leaders Conference yes um on the calendar it's Tuesday Wednesday Thursday when do they normally start on Tuesday do you know idea ballpark I won't hold you to it Tuesday it's it usually it starts in the evening like, a, like my first like I they used to do them or in the or, you know late afternoon I'll say 
Um, so you're going up Tuesday morning and you right. have time to deal with it. And it's mostly set up because probably the majority of county's business meetings are on Mondays. And so ours used to be way back. And the idea was you could still do business. You could start on Tuesday. Our business meetings are on Tuesday. So it doesn't really work. Really and then it says go through Thursday. So I'm imagining they're doing, you know, a breakfast meeting and then you're released or? No, it's Thursday goes till late. It used to go Thursday night is the final thing, which it's hard to keep people there for the last, like official function. So we're not Thursday driving night. home Thursday No, night. generally, it's typically you stay, night. especially if it's in Spokane, Thursday night, come back Friday morning. There's nothing. They have, sometimes they even schedules and stuff Friday morning before people leave, but typically the, the uh, conference is over Thursday night. Okay. So you have to plan on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, really. And that's all that hotel lodging is arranged through them? No. We're through, through our travel agent. Oh, okay. <laughs> travel agent, got it. No, they will have a room block as far as like at the, so it's, they'll have the number of rooms for the folks at the uh, conference block though. And the, at the rate. So we get a better deal because they're, and then if you don't fit, sometimes those fill up and they're gone. So I would, Lee's always really good about. Well, then I'm kind of looking at it and it says we have radio that Thursday at 804. So we'll reschedule it or we will do it. We call in. From Spokane. Yeah, we can do it from Spokane. It's not a problem. It's, I was going to say, that could be a problem. No. Um, okay. So getting back to it, I know the the uh, Umatilla National Forest, the Forest Service closed it down totally. Oh. Like it's you know, practically gates locked. There's no camping. There's no recreating. Wow. Um, no logging. No, there wasn't much going on out there anyways. But, uh, and then what I have heard though is, is that there's a good chance we're going to be going IFPL for for all of Eastern Washington. So, yeah, I'm kind of spread down already. Which, uh, which, what I'm hearing is the same thing there. The loggers are surprised. Um, every year, the, the loggers ask for two week notice, like give us, you know, don't just kind of just because, you know, we can go to flowers, we can do other things, and that hasn't been given yet, but they don't know if they will get it. And that's was the earlier with our road because if we go to four, we, our we our projects down. get shut down too. And so I hope you can get in touch with Hillary because there's no reason why we can't do that out there. Right. You've got enough heavy equipment there that you can right. put excavators you could just dump it on. Right. Hillary. So um, that's just you know what I heard from the, the logging side though. Okay. Else? Have you talked to Jay out there? Jay with Mel Adams? Yeah. So he took, you know, he when you met him, he's got that big group of guys that he has that's doing prescribed fires, cleanups. Like they're know. all at the NR shift now, aren't they? They all got shifted to fires. They're all they all got sent Well, I had to reach out to KBH for this Reds thing. Um to reach out to him out there to see if he had any project ideas to bring to that table too. Because it's for your so the big everything thrown into it. Yep. I don't know what Jay would have really out there. Just thought I'd throw the invite so That's, I didn't know if you heard anything. Um, no, I haven't talked to him lately, but I should. Okay. Yeah, you never know when you get that many beds with wallets, what they might be interested in. Right. Um, the other update I heard is, is that the, the spotted frogs, you know, in the Glenwood Valley, numbers are way down. Significantly. Well, they need water. Well, and since, you know, and it's went down since, um, uh, Hel or not Hell Roaring, but the big buddy got shot off, you know, a few years ago, the Reds just, toad numbers went significantly down. And there's, I think, only one really heavy area, and that's the lowest part of the valley. You know, right before it goes into the big fire lake. So, just something to keep on your guys' radar. Okay. Not surprising. And then, did you guys get a phone call from Sage Park this morning? Yes. Okay. And I did see, I haven't opened it yet, but I think that, I think it came out. Say thing that about four not, times over yeah. the meeting, so. Yeah. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Yeah. In that group of stuff. It was very clear that it was, you know, it's just the, the, not the decision. Right. Not the decision. Just to walk it across to make the building. What? Today? Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on going as soon as we sure. get it. Okay. 
Anything else? Yes, ma'am. I just let the, the lady know that I did message Carmen and she was shooting for August 1st, but the way everything's going, she's hoping for mid August to open up the jail ministry. Okay. I know they have different COVID protocols in the jail than everybody else does. So they're kind of airplanes, trains, all that kind of stuff. They so they might be that. They might just be following COVID protocols. You need Cord Gordy to take a tour. I don't. No. Okay. I know how to walk upstairs. We can do I didn't last week. I didn't know it was Gordy locked just, or shut down. Then we can look where we want. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I did last week. <laughs> I just put my hat on and my orange vest and acted like you belonged. Acted like I belonged there. <laughs> yeah, no job site again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little uh, drywall. It was good. <laughs> a wall. You just hop right in. Yeah. Yeah. Anything? Okay. Um, if there's nothing further, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. This is bizarre at this hour. But. I know, it's just weird. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adjourn the regular meeting um, till 8 a.m. for the scheduled workshop on Thursday, the 28th. Okay. You need to say the bottom part. I will, yeah, or you can if you want, or I will. Go ahead. Uh, I also will note for the record the Board of Commissioners will be attending a the Clickdap County Public Economic Development Authority meeting tonight. Uh, so we're we're not leaving. We're here. We just have a break. Uh, Tuesday, July twenty seventh, beginning at five fifteen, the meeting will be held in this room. So and that is open to the public. So that's Case Apita, the Clickadack County Public Economic Development Authority, which is the Board of Commissioners, and a, it's a much bigger group too. So it's um, um, you know industry sectors, um, healthcare, ag. Mayors. Energy. Mayors. The mayors are also members, so all three city mayors uh, are there. I believe where we have, I think our count, I think we have thirteen will be here in person. But it is open to the public if you um, wish to come and watch. It's always fun. It's always it is actually fun. It's a good it's a good group. Uh, with that, I had the motion to have a second. You know, I, second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting until 8 a.m. on Thursday. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. We are adjourned.